In Kashmir Shaivism, one of the core principles they refer to with the Sanskrit word pratyabhijna, which is usually translated recognition. And this is considered to be um, of the essence in Kashmir Shaivism because the way they understand our situation, which I concur with, <clears throat> our only spiritual problem is that we don't recognize what is going on in real time, right here, right now. And the only requirement for realization, for liberation, for the solution to the spiritual problem is simply this recognition of what's actually happening here, what this actually consists of, what's actually going on. And it's not that we're not seeing it, not experiencing it completely, it's that we don't recognize it. It's as if you walk past an old friend in a crowd and you see their face, but it doesn't click who they are. And then you see them again and you think, oh, wow, I didn't recognize you. So it's not a matter of not seeing it, it's a matter of not appreciating what it is, of not noticing what it is that is actually happening here. So what is it, what is it actually, specifically, that needs to be recognized? I, I find the term recognition to be a little weighty and it's kind of have some implications, so I've sort of substituted my own word notice or noticing for the same principle. What is it exactly that needs to be noticed? What is it exactly that needs to be recognized? Well, what needs to be recognized is Shakti, Chit Shakti. Shakti is the energy of divinity. It is the very energy that every aspect, and especially the core aspect of creation, consists of. So it is exalted, it is spiritual, it is sacred. But it is also completely accessible and completely obvious because it's exactly what your experience is made of right here, right now, and always. And it is made of nothing but that whatsoever. So this is noticeable. Now, we're typically used to experiencing, interpreting our experience as in terms of uh, uh, various elaborate interpretations, that we exist and other people exist and the environment exists and the world exists and all these situations exist and they're all involved in a very complex causal interaction and we're somewhat concerned or not with engaging in that interaction in some way that we consider will be beneficial to ourselves or to the situation or whatever. So it's this rather elaborate interpretation that we typically have of it. This is very much analogous to watching a movie. In a movie, you may be very concerned about the plot of the hero and heroine and very concerned to, to be antagonistic towards the, the, uh, the villains and the, and the problems that they're facing and you're really working hard to engage with this whole plot line in a way that is meaningful and that you hope comes out well, okay? This is very much similar to the way we engage with our lives, which is why it's so easy to go to a movie and get involved, because we're, this mode of interacting with forms is a mode that we're all very familiar with and very comfortable with, and we go to it effortlessly. But, what's actually happening in a movie? Are there any people there? Are there any characters there? Are there any situations there? There are flashes of light on a screen. That is what a movie consists of, flashes of light on a screen. And the imagination supplies all the plot, it supplies all the importance, it supplies all the emotional investment, it supplies all of the concern, it, applies, it supplies all of the remembering what happened and anticipating what's going to happen and getting involved in all these plot lines and intricacy and the importance of the whole thing and all of this is being supplied by the imagination from looking at flashes of light. Flashes of light. Now, interestingly enough, what is going on here? What is going on here? Well, we're, we can all come up with a similar elaborate interpretations that we would in a movie. Well, we're in this building in Berkeley and there's other people here and we're here, you know, 
perhaps because we're curious or engaged in some degree of spirituality and we want to improve ourselves or realize something or forget something or improve something or, you know, all of these, anyway, you, I'm sure you all n could supply your own narration as to the importance of what is going on here and why you feel like you're here and all of this, all of this is, is as if it would be the, basically the plot line of the movie that this happens to be a scene of in your life. In your, the, the movie is your life and this is a scene and, and you know, the, there's a plot line, there's a narration, right? We all know, we're all very familiar with this. But what is actually happening here? What is actually happening here? Well, it turns out to be not very different than a movie. It turns out to be flashes of light. Now, we can notice this, we can observe this, we can discover this very, very directly. And this is what the recognition that is so esteemed in Kashmir Shaivism refers to. This is what the noticing that I refer to is about. Noticing what is actually going on here, what it actually consists of, and that it actually consists of instantaneous flashes of light. Now, the word light is a little specific because that obviously refers to vision, and we experience, our experience consists of various other qualities as well. But um, if we, we have this technical term shakti, which appropriately enough refers to exactly the same thing, it refers to these flashes, and these flashes show up as light in our field of vision, show up as sound in our field of hearing, show up as thought in our field of mentation, show up as sensation in our field of touch, and smell and taste, and so on and so forth. But we can experience very directly. Uh, you know, it's easy to say, well, yeah, flashes of light, okay, yeah, but where'd the Hillside Club go? Where'd Berkeley go? You know, where all these people sitting here go? Where'd the chair go? Where'd the floor go? Okay, let's find out. Where do they go? Okay, if you'd like to try a little experiment with me, I invite you to close your eyes, and leave them closed for a little while, <coughs> and look at your field of vision. Look at what you are seeing in your field of vision. And you may notice various sort of shadowy shapes, sort of grayish, grayish shapes that are rather unclearly defined against a darker background and there may be some shifting in motion. If you look a little closer, you'll notice there are countless tiny, tiny, tiny little flashes of light, little um, dots of light. And if you look at the sort of patterns of gray that are showing up, you'll notice, I expect, that these patterns are made up of nothing other than these little minuscule flashes of light. If you look at the dark places in between these patterns, I think you'll notice the same thing, min minuscule flashes of light. <coughs> now, if you look at these flashes of light very, very closely, try to isolate one, try to see, try to find one, try to really pin one down and really see what it is, some very interesting things can be observed. You will be able to notice that you can't actually find one of these dots. You can't actually isolate it. You can't actually see one appear. You can't actually see one disappear. And yet, they're completely obvious, right? I mean, they're completely present in the field of your, the vision of your closed eyes. So this is a very strange state of affairs. There's all of these minuscule flashes of light, and yet you can't actually find them. You can't actually pin them down. Now, another aspect of the field of vision, if you'll look, you'll notice it seems to be taking place in a kind of a space. There is a, a, a an area, let's say, a, 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 well, let's, let's call it a space or a field, where these flashes seem to be occurring, right? And this area has no qualities of its own. It's clear, it's, or you might say, transparent or neutral. And then these flashes are the content of what is happening in this space. Okay. Um, leaving your eyes closed, direct your attention to your, your sense of sound. You may, you may notice a little slight ringing or a, 
a buzzing in one or both of your ears. Um, concentrate on that and, and notice what it's, what is it actually made of? What, what, as you hear this ringing or as you hear this, this, this subtle sound, what, what is, what is actually presenting itself as a sound? We say it's a sound, that's fine. But if you go to it very, very closely, what is it? And if you look very closely, you may notice it consists of, again, discrete sort of flashes of sound, discrete little, little minuscule um, buzzes of sound, or we, we don't really have words. Flashes applies to light. We don't have a similar word um, for sound, but if you look closely, you'll discover the texture of it is very similar. It's discontinuous. It is, it is discrete. It is ongoing, and consists of of countless inseparable um, instance of, instances of sound, presences of sound. And again, if you try and find any of this presence of these any of these presences of sound, you can't pin them down, can you? You can't isolate it. You can't say exactly what it is, and yet paradoxically it's ob very obvious and very present. It's quite clear that the sound is, present, is presenting itself in your experience. Now if you rub your thumb and your forefinger very lightly together with a little sort of a tickling sensation and, and direct your attention to this, and what exactly is this experience made of? What exactly does it consist of? And if you look very closely with your attention, you may notice that it likewise is made of made up of countless little distinct instances of touch sensation, sort of sparkles of touch that appear in your experience and disappear simu you know, simultaneously. And likewise, if you go look, try to pin one of them down try to isolate it, try and hold it, try and find what it is, you won't be able to do so. Again, paradoxically, it's very present and very obvious that this sensation is occurring, and it's obvious that it has this amazing little sparkly texture to it, but if you look very, very closely, you can't actually find what it is that's presenting itself, even though it is so obviously there. It's a little more difficult, but you can try at this point going to the field of your thought. And as, th as thought comes up, it may be sort of ghostly or just a sense of thought, or you may have words coming up or arguments or uh, narrations. Again, look, look at what exactly is presenting itself as thought. What substance does it consist of? What sort of texture does it have? And I think you'll find, if you look closely, lo and behold, it similarly consists of a funny kind of a sparkly presence, again, of countless bits of discrete flashes of presence of thought. Um, and likewise, if you look for them and try and find exactly what they are and pin them down, you will find it difficult to do so. So now, with your eyes closed, experience your field of vision, simultaneously your field of sound, and your finger against your, th your thumb, the sensation, and this texture of thought, and look at what they're made of. And they are certainly different and distinguishable. We can tell sound from sight and touch from thought. And yet, <laughs> remarkably, they seem to consist of a similar texture of a field of countless minute instantaneous flashes of presence that are themselves unfindable. So that ends our little experiment. So this is very interesting. So as you open your eyes and look around, notice how as you see this room around you, if you look very closely, it, what you're seeing, even though there's lots of colors and brightnesses and all that presenting themselves, if you look at the texture of it, Lo and behold, it consists of countless little minuscule flashes of presence of light, doesn't it? So what you're seeing with your eyes open is essentially the same as what you see with your eyes closed. 
even though it may present itself in a different degree of color and detail and so on and so forth. Now, another interesting aspect about these fields of flashing presences that our experience actually consists of, if you, if you look and notice, is they are instantaneous. They happen only in the present moment. They have no duration. They, they, there's, no, there's no period of time that they actually are sticking around. It's not like these flashes sort of flash like a light bulb turning on and sit there and then they turn off. They're just, you know, they, they turn on so fast that their turning off happens as soon as their turning on happens, so you can't even find a turning off because it's too quick, it's too quick. And yet amazingly, all of this detail, all of this narration of our lives in, in Berkeley and the Bay Area and United States and geopolitics and all your friends and all your history and all the people around you and everything going on whatsoever, your body, your health, all of these things are just a narration of this field of flashes. It's like looking at the night sky and supposing you see the Big Dipper. There's no Big Dipper there, there's just flashes of light. We, we connect the dots and say, oh, it's the Big Dipper. So likewise, there's this incredible field of flashes and we say, oh, it's you, it's you, it's the Hillside Club, it's Berkeley, it's the floor, it's my body, it's my thought, it's, my, it's the sound I'm hearing. You know, it's a very interesting state of affairs. But I invite you to play with this, I invite you to explore it, because Doing so is profound. This is, this is a profound revelation of what we actually consist of, what reality itself actually consists of in the most fundamental way. The, it turns out these are not just interesting artifacts of perception. These are actually an exploration of what reality is actually made of. It's, reality is actually made of this mysterious energy presence in this mysterious present consciousness. Now, during this whole experiment, I directed our attention at the energy and not at consciousness because consciousness turns out to be not particularly findable or particularly evident, whereas the energy is very obvious. However, they're one and the same thing. They never occur. Consciousness, the symptom of consciousness is the apparition of energy. The symptom of energy is, 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 it, is it being perceived within consciousness. So we needn't bother with trying to isolate one or the other. They are two different words for the same thing. And of course those wonderful Indians anticipating this come up with a technical term for this, chit shakti, which is the magic power of consciousness, the divine power of consciousness, which is, according to Kashmir Shaivism, the only thing that's actually happening here. And by exploring these kinds of experiments, you can verify for yourself whether or not that's true. <laughs>